Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we've got the latest little computer in from GPD. This is their GPD Micro and it's a full-fledged Windows PC in handheld form. And they're billing this as something that people in the IT field uh, might like to use out in the field. It's very portable yet very capable with a ton of I.O. on it. And we're going to be taking a closer look at what makes this thing tick here in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this came in free of charge from GPD. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this little device is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. This right now is selling at a price of $299 if you do their pre-order on Indiegogo. Uh, this is one company I've been very comfortable recommending people to, given the fact that they have a very good track record of producing these really cool little PCs. And I've bought a few of them uh, over the last couple of years, so I can recommend them. Uh, the price after that, they say, is going to be $399, although I suspect you'll be able to get it at a lower price from different distributors once it's made its way out to those uh, online shops. So take a look at that. But if you want to get in at the right price, $299, is the starting point right now. This has a Celeron N4100 processor. That's a Gemini Lake quad-core chip. It's very similar to some of the mini PCs we have looked at over the last several months. It has four gigs of RAM and a 128 gigabyte M2 SATA SSD. And the SSD is upgradable. We took it apart a little bit earlier. You can pop that SSD out and put in another one, but I believe you're limited to M2 SATA drives only. It will not support uh, NVMe drive, so keep that in mind. And just note that you cannot upgrade the RAM on this, so the four gigs of RAM it comes with uh, is what you are going to be stuck with. It's got a 720p display, six inches, very similar to some of the other GPD PCs we have looked at here on the channel over the last two years or so. Looks decent enough, it's not spectacular, but it's good. Uh, however, this one is not a touch display, and it's a bit deceiving because it looks like it should be one. It's very glossy, as you can see, but touching the screen uh, does absolutely nothing. You need to use the built-in trackpad here in order to navigate things. Uh, the device itself weighs about a pound, 0.97 pounds to be exact, or 440 grams. Uh, so it's very lightweight. It's got a nice feel to it. It is plastic all the way around, but it feels very rugged and secure. And of course, there are no moving parts in this, so it should be able to take a little bit of abuse. But note that it's not metal, unlike some of the other more expensive uh, GPD mini PCs that uh, have been out there for a little while. I am quite fond of all the ports that you get on this one. You've got a USB 3 port here on the left-hand side, along with a micro SD card slot. Uh, the cards will go all the way inside of that slot there, so you can leave them in all the time. Uh, you have a little spot here for a wrist strap if you want that. You have a headphone jack here, so you can plug in your favorite pair of headphones if you want. On the back here, you have some things that will definitely be of interest to the IT community. Uh, the first is a serial port, so if you are connecting up to embedded devices that require you to connect up via serial, uh, you've got that here, no dongles needed. HDMI out over here. I believe this will support 4K as well, so you should be able to get a pretty nice display going out with this one. Two more USB 3 ports, and then you have a full service USB Type C port. So this will charge the device, uh, but it will also allow you to output video uh, and you can get data back and forth to it as well. So you could plug this into a docking station, for example, and use it like a desktop. And a little bit earlier, we tested the display output of both the HDMI and the USB-C. It was able to drive two 4K 60 Hertz displays at 60 Hertz independently and still drive the middle display at 720p. Very functional if you want to turn this into a mini PC in addition to using it as a portable. Another thing I like about it is that you have gigabit ethernet here on the back too. So it's a uh, really full featured uh, device here without the need to carry too many dongles around with you. I really was quite pleased with that. It will charge uh, very quickly via USB-C. So if you have one of those fast charging devices for your other computers, they'll work on here. Battery life, we tested around six to seven hours and it will vary based on uh, what you decide to do with it. It's got a full keyboard here. It is backlit, as you can see here, so you can use it in the dark. Uh, the trackpad's kind of neat. So it's a click pad, much like you would see on a laptop, uh, but you also have buttons here on the side in case you're having trouble uh, clicking and dragging, for example. So this is the left mouse button, the right mouse button, and you've got a scroll button over here. 
You got a power button there. Uh, over here is your fan switch, and we'll take a look at the thermals in a little bit. So you can have it run completely silently by switching that fan to the off position. Uh, just note though that you might see the computer throttle a little bit more when the fan is off. Uh, but if you're only using this as a terminal device or an occasional web browsing sort of thing while you're troubleshooting out in the field and the fan noise is bothering you, you can just switch it off and I don't think you'll see much of a performance issue. It's only when you really start pushing it that you want that fan on to uh, keep everything cool. Now the fan noise on this is not bad, but you will hear it. It's a tiny little fan that you can see peeking out here from uh, underneath the venting. It'll have a bit of a whine to it, but it's not that loud. Although if you're in a quiet room, you'll certainly hear it. So again, if you are getting distracted by fan noise, you do have the option just to shut it off and you should be fine. Uh, these Gemini Lake chips are pretty efficient, so they can uh, work a little better when they are not being actively cooled. But again, for the best performance, leave that fan on and you will, I think, be quite pleased with the results. The only thing missing from this little computer is a webcam. In fact, there's no camera on this at all, which might be a plus to some people. Uh, but if you are in an environment that they expect you to be on these conference calls all day where they can look at you, uh, you're going to have to connect up an external camera to it. But otherwise, this thing has uh, just about everything you could want in a little portable PC. Now let's take a look and see how it performs. We've got a lot of stuff to take a look at, so let's get into that. So let's start off with some web browsing. We'll load up nasa.gov here and see how fast everything comes up. And as you can see, uh, things load up pretty quickly. Again, there's no touch on this, but you can use the uh, trackpad here to scroll like you would on a regular laptop, or you can grab the mouse button here and scroll up and down. Uh, this does support AC wireless. It also has Bluetooth built in, so I think you'll have a pretty decent experience. I just tried touching the screen again. Uh, you'll have a pretty decent experience here with connectivity, and of course you've got that gigabit ethernet in the back there as well. Uh, we also loaded up my YouTube channel and we looked at a, a 1080p 60 frames per second video, of course running on the 720p display here. No drop frames, all the videos seem to work just fine, so I think if you are uh, looking to watch some Netflix movies on this, for example, you shouldn't have uh, any problems doing that with this particular device or playing any other videos too. And on the browserbench.org spinometer test, we got a score of 65.95. Uh, that puts it right within the margin of error with other similar Gemini Lake processors we have looked at recently. Uh, most notably here, the Pepper Jobs Mini PC, which had a very uh, efficient cooling system on that same processor, came in pretty much at the exact same score. And you'll see some other similarities to this as we work our way through the rest of the review. We also ran Microsoft Word just to get a feel how doing some work on it might be. And that, of course, uh, ran very well and as expected. And to some degree, when you're uh, working on a 720p display, you might actually sense a little better performance than these same chips would get you at 1080p, just given that you're driving a lot less pixels. So overall, a very good work experience on this device, no matter what you do with it. So let's move on now to some gaming. We started with Rocket League and we set it to high quality settings and we got around 25 to 30 frames per second at the native 720p resolution. When we turned the settings all the way down, we got around 40 frames per second, so not too bad on that front. Shovel Knight, a retro-inspired game, uh, was pretty steady at 60 frames per second, which was good to see. Half-Life 2, an older game, ran at a nice 60 frames per second as well with the uh, native resolution at 720p. And we were also able to get the Dolphin emulator working on this, and we're running Wave Race, one of my favorite GameCube games. And as you can see here, it's running pretty nicely. It's about 30 frames per second, so it's not going to deliver you uh, desktop performance by any means, but it's actually running at uh, pretty much the same performance we saw out of the uh, Pepper Jobs PC, which is running with the same processor. So altogether, I don't think it's being uh, hindered at all by its small size and seems to be performing pretty consistently with this uh, provided the fan remains on. So I think a pretty nice little PC for doing this kind of stuff as well as some uh, IT related work tasks. And on the 3 d Mark CloudGate test, we got a score of 3,262. That puts it very, very close to the Pepper Jobs Mini PC that we looked at a couple of weeks ago that is the best performing example of the N4100 processor. Uh, we also have the worst performing example of the N4100 with the Chewy G box, and you can see uh, really where this one falls in. It's actually running very, very nicely for a very small form factor PC. Uh, we also ran the 3D Mark stress test to see how well it did under load. 
and there we got a passing score of 98.6%. You can see the temperatures up there on screen as well. So it runs slightly hotter than the uh, Pepper Jobs PC does, but not too much. In fact, you won't see all that much throttling with this one either, uh, which again, I am very impressed with for a small form factor PC. Let's take a look at this in action. So what we're doing right now is maxing out the processor with the fan on. I'm using a little app here called Power Max. And what it's doing is it's just loading up those four cores with as much data to process as possible. And you can see here we're running at a steady 2.3 gigahertz and it should actually stay there for a good length of time. I did see it drop down to like 2.1, 2.15 after a longer duration stretch of running this test, but it is uh, very good for such a small device. Uh, by comparison, when we did this with the uh, Chewy G-Box PC a few weeks ago, uh, it was dropping almost in half uh, pretty soon after that test began. So this is a very good way to just see how efficient your cooling is uh, while the test is running. So you can see here it's going down to 2.14 gigahertz now. Uh, on the Pepper Jobs PC, it held steady at 2.3. And what's happening here is the computer is adjusting the speed of the processor based on temperature. Uh, but again, I didn't see it drop too much lower than this. Uh, what I'm going to do now here is turn the fan off and see uh, what kind of impact this has. Uh, when I was testing this earlier, it didn't have a significant impact, actually. You'll see it starting to uh, dial itself down a little bit more here as things go on. But again, I don't think you're going to see a huge difference by running this fanless, especially if you're not maxing out all four cores all the time. Uh, but if you are looking for very consistent performance while this thing is running and doing something a little more uh, heavy duty, uh, then perhaps keeping that fan on will be better. But again, I'm not seeing a huge difference here when that fan is off. And we also loaded up Cody and had it work with those HEVC files we like to play with from Jellyfish. We've got the 140 megabit per second 4K file running here. It did have a couple of skip frames when it first got started, but after that it was able to decode that video without issue. That's another feature of these Gemini Lake chips. And for the heck of it, I hooked it up to my home theater system and we were able to get a bunch of my Blu-ray MKV files working properly. It was passing over lossless DTS HD audio and also properly switching my television into 24p mode. So it's a very functional mini PC in addition to being a very handy portable mini laptop. One thing that's not yet working though is Linux. We did try to boot up Ubuntu like we typically do with these reviews. It didn't work. They are promising though support for Ubuntu Mate, but at the time I'm recording this video, that support is not yet available. So you'll want to keep an eye on their website and if it uh, does become available in the near future, I'll do a follow-up video likely on my Extras channel so we can demo it and see how it works. Now what they have done in the past is they often ship the device first running Windows and then they work on the Linux support later. There is a higher powered version of this called the GPD Pocket that I believe has a Core M3 processor inside. Uh, that one does in fact support Ubuntu Mate, so I would expect it to get here eventually, but at the moment it's not yet there, so you may want to wait before buying if that is your intended goal. But it seems to be uh, working very well with Windows, and if that's what you're looking for, I think you'll like this one quite a bit. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.